said this morning because if I if I decided to I could just turn you loose because she pretty much preached what I wanted to in a roundabout way she said just about everything that's important but I want to reconsider some of the things that uh, she didn't say or did say and kind of elaborate on that a bit so just one verse and uh, and this is important business to start with and uh, so let's read this. It says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You believe the Bible? Everybody say, so loved. So loved. You know, the Bible could have said, For God loved the world that he gave. He didn't say that, did he? He could have said, Oh, the Lord loved the world and therefore he, you know, he gave his Son. He didn't say it that way. He, you know, I believe that every word in the Bible is important. How about you? I believe that the Lord put that in there for God so, everybody say so. so. He so loved the world that He gave His only, everybody say only, oh. begotten Son, that whosoever will. He said that on, for a reason. It's like when the Bible says in John 15, the Bible says, I am, He could have said it this way, I am the vine and you're the branches. But He didn't. He said, I am the true vine and you're the branches. Now, you see, sometimes we read so fast, we miss important words. For God so loved, that's an important word there because he's emphasizing the fact that God was in such inc incredible love with humanity. He said, I love you so much, I'm going to go to the nth degree to make sure that you have salvation. I'm going to send not the angels. The best angel in heaven was not good enough for God. Did you know it? Even though they were good, they could not fulfill what God had to do to save you. What an incredible God. For God so loved the world. Now, He didn't just love you and me. He loved all creation. How many of you know that Abraham was sent to, he was the father of many nations. You know, when God came to Abraham there in the beginning, He said this, He said, you know what, your, your, your seed is going to be like the sand of the sea, like the stars in heaven. They're going to be so multitudinous that you can't even count them. And God had, what God had in mind when He came to Abraham in those days was grace. Everybody say grace. The promise was delivered by grace. Grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. The law came by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Read it for John there in chapter 1. I won't try to encourage you this morning. For God so loved us that He didn't just send whatever He could find. He went through all of heaven and He said, it's, You're the only one who can do it, son. You're the only one who can fulfill the incredible uh, detail of the what it's going to take to deliver humanity from their sin. I'm always impressed when I read Revelation. And the first time I read it, I, I cried, you know, and it, it just I just wept because of the, the incredible, incredible, incredible Jesus we serve. The Bible says that John saw and they searched heaven. And he said, My God, I can't find anybody that can open the seals. There's just there's nobody. But it makes him smile because he said, oh, but there was one like unto the Lamb who had been slain. 
He said, oh, but he's worthy to open those seals. Thank God we found somebody. Are you listening? Who is his name? The same one, the only begotten of the Father, Jesus Christ. He was the only one who could do what had to be done. He's the only one who can do anything that has to be done. Nothing else will work. Your religious acts, you're doing good, this and whatever, it doesn't matter when it comes to your salvation or to what God wants to do. It's got to be through Jesus. Let me explain to you. She just read it, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, And Christ being made sin for us made us to be the righteousness of God in Him. Where? In Jesus. You can't find righteousness nowhere else. Your righteousness, if it, if it depended on your blood and your ability, you're going to go to hell. You say, but I gave my life for it. I'm, thank you, but your blood wasn't good enough and your life ain't pure enough. Your righteousness is as filthy rags. But we found one who's pure enough, whose blood was enough, and he's able to secure you and satisfy the, 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 uh, the, the need for God to deliver you. His name was Jesus. Everybody say it one more time. For God so loved. That's right. The emphasis is on so loved that he didn't just give it a half shot. He gave it everything he had. And you know what? It was good enough. It was good enough. You say, well, you're setting us up. Yes, I am. I'm setting you up. Because how many of you know Jesus was our pattern? Everybody say pattern. He says the servant is not above his who? Master. Who's your master? No, just look at the mirror and say, I am. Because half the time, that's the promise. That's the real truth. Come on. Who's, who's our master? Jesus. He should be our master, right? Everybody say, he's my Lord. Let me explain to you something. I've said this before. There's a huge difference between Jesus as your Savior and Jesus as your Lord. You know, how many of you can see that in the life of Jesus personally, Father was his Lord? He said, God, I, he said, Father, I didn't come to do anything but your will. That's all I came for. I don't have an agenda. I don't have anything to do except your will be done. That's it. That's all I have to come for. I can't say that. Can you? And I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that uh, you can't, you know, you have to live your life, okay? But I love what Kelly read to me the other day, and I, I, I practice this and sometimes I forget and, and sometimes I fail miserably, okay? Because I'm still human, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, Derek Prince said this. He said, I get up in the morning, and I don't do it like this particularly, but he said, I might get in front of the mirror and say, my day, Lord, is all about pleasing you. How can I please you today? My friend, if we acted that way, if we just just even thought about that in the morning, it would change our life, and it would change this community. Everything about this place would be different. <coughs> Let me explain to you how it would be different. Did you know that Enoch was just translated because he pleased God? What a testimony. That's what the Bible says concerning Enoch. The Bible says his testimony was, oh, he just pleased me. That's what it says in Hebrews. Read it. There is in chapter 11. He pleased God. God translated He was not. Boom. God took him. He gone. All right. I'm saying this to say a few other things here. And I can see that I'm not going to get through with this, but I want to say a few things. For God so loved the world. Let me ask you a question. Did God give till it hurt? Really? Everybody say, he, he gave till it hurt? Say, well, he's God. It didn't hurt him to give his own son. I got news for you, my friend. You know why he could do what he did? I'm going to tell you why he could do what he did. Because his love is so incredibly powerful. 
He could see past the cross for the joy that was set before him. He could see beyond the agony of what he was about to go through. And the father knew that ultimately his son was everything he looked for, he was going to raise him from the dead. He said he's not going to leave his soul in hell. Or he's not going to let him rot in the grave. He's going to bring him back on the third day. Jesus said that concerning what he, when he went. He said, hey, you can kill me in three days and I'll raise up this temple. The Jews didn't even have a clue what he's talking about. But in three days, he said, I'll be back. See, Jesus had absolute confidence that God was going to do what he said. And his life was pure enough and the sacrifice was enough that when he went through what he went through, God was going to raise him on the third day. How many of you know, I believe that Jesus knew the Old Testament very well. And he knew what that old lamb down there in Exodus <laughs> chapter 12 represented. That little lamb represented himself. And he knew that little lamb was the difference. His blood, that is. The little lamb's blood was the difference between life. Life, right? Death. Light and darkness. How many glad God took you out of darkness and brought you into his marvelous light? Yes, sir. I want to tell you this. Uh, the other day, we've been praying for Robert, you know, a lot. Because his health has been failing quick. And uh, he, I got him, well, I was supposed to bring him home from the hospital and Somehow or another, I was at the hospital. I was in the building, and I missed him. Well, how'd that happen? I asked him later. I said, Robert, I was standing at your door at 4.30, dude. And I walked up, and I said, Who, where's Robert? And the nurse turned to me and goes, he's right there. I walked out. I said, where? He goes, well, he was standing at the door three seconds ago with a nurse. He might as well have been an angel. He just disappeared. I couldn't find him anywhere. 4.30. So I thought, well, he'll, and the nurse said, well, he'll be back. He, he, he ain't released yet. He'll be back to his room. Well, guess what? He never went back to his room. And I couldn't find him. Well, thank you. Carolyn showed up. And so Carolyn got to take him home from the hospital because somehow or another I missed him. Anyway, the point is, I got him, we got him home from the hospital, got him laid up, got him put in the trailer there. And uh, he asked me when I got there, he said, would you do me a favor? I said, anything you need. He said, run down to Circle K and buy me a couple squirts. I mean, what squirt is. <coughs> One of my favorite drinks when they're cold, boy, they're good. Anyway, so I went down there, bought him three of them, came back, and I told him, I said, Robert is late. I, I need to, I got to roll. I got to roll. He goes, well, let me ask you a question. He said, can you pray for me and pray with me? And I said, yeah. He said, I want to make sure that my heart's right. I want to make sure that my soul's right. I said, well, Robert, God's made it really easy. It's not hard. I said, you know what I'm talking about. He goes, I know. But he said, you know, it's just comforting to pray with you. I said, let's do this right now. And so we prayed together. And I said, Robert, I know you're not ashamed of this, and I know you're not afraid of this, but I want you to pray out loud where I can hear you right here. And so we prayed together, and I left him like this. I said, Robert, before... I said, turn the TV off and just sit here and just say, Lord, I thank you that Jesus is my Savior. He's my deliverer and my healer. And say it a hundred million times. He goes, I will. Well, I talked to him the other day and he said, you know, I said that until my mouth turned into cotton. I said, you know what? Go get a drink and keep on. Because I told him, I said, faith cometh how? By hearing. And I said, how do you hear it? By speaking the word. I said, just keep talking. He called me last night late and he goes, you know what, I'm still scratching and clawing. He said, I'm hanging on. I said, well, you keep doing that. You keep doing that. But how many of you know Jesus is big enough to take you from whatever you were in your past? Because Robert had a, uh, an interesting past, just like most people who come out of sin. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You know, I wrote this down. The Lord put this in my heart the other day. I'm going to put it on Facebook. And I wrote it down this morning because... Sometimes, even though the Lord gives it to me, it'll, it'll disappear over time. You know what I'm talking about? But this is the words he gave me. He said, secure your future by removing your past. And the word was repent. How many of you know you can secure your future by removing your past? Just simply repent. And God will remove your past and he'll secure your future. You'll be securely in the hands of Jesus forever. You understand what I say? Everybody say, so loved. God so loved the world. Are you listening? 
for the Lord, for God Almighty, He so loved us that He sent or He gave. Everybody say He gave. Now I asked you this question a while ago. He did what? He gave to what? He gave till it hurt. He gave everything He had in order that you can sit here today and say, I'm heading off to eternity in heaven with God. With Almighty God, I'm going to be there. You know, Alex was greatly comforted because his dad, when he passed away, and I know a lot of we had an interesting past. I know him. I know he did. But did you know God's able to take your past and get rid of it? And you know, I told Robert the other day, I said, God's not imputing your trespasses, my friend. Because I'm telling you right now, sometimes the past that people have, it keeps them from moving into the future because it haunts them. Let it go, God did. Why are you hanging on to a bunch of dead bones that God buried? You go back in the closet and you dig up these dead bones that God has no concern over because they're dead. He forgot it. You might as well let go of it yourself. Who brought it up? Your stupid flesh brought it up. Leave it alone. You know, people, people who come out of different backgrounds, they should not discuss their past. Let that devil die. God did. Don't even talk about it. Paul said it's a shameful thing to talk about these things. Leave it alone. Don't bring it up because all it does is destroy you and bring guilt on you or even affect your future. Are you listening? So leave it alone. Don't even talk about trash. Let it go. Everybody say let it go. Leave it alone. Let me tell you something. If, if, if anything comes up in y'all's lives and, 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 and somehow or another this comes along and says, but you know what? Um, <laughs> you're dreaming because God can't do this. Look what, look what you did. I guarantee you that is a demon. How many of you know that condemnation is a devil? It's not from God. Now, if there's work, things working in your life and He's convicting you, that's the love of God reaching out to you saying, please, I'm going to help you. I want to bring you deliverance. Yes. But if you're living under condemnation and guilt and shame and pain, you're under the demon. You're not under God. Because God don't do it. He says, I will remove that and set you free today. But let me say this one more time. If the Son, therefore, shall do what? Everybody say, make. Make you free. Ye shall be what? How many, how many of you understand that He don't set you as it were free? He makes you free. Sometimes you need to understand, you need to take some steps to agree with what He said. How many of you agree with what He said? I agree with what He said. And I'm not preaching what I intended to say, but nonetheless it's good for us. Did you know, listen to me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to give it up here in just a minute, but listen to this. How many of you say you love God? Nobody? How many of you say you love God? Say, yes! Okay, you say you do? All right, thank you. I say I do. And let me just throw this in as I go. I say I love God, but you know what? Unfortunately, I have not got a complete handle on His grace. Because if I had a handle on His grace, I would be a different person today. You say, well, I don't even know what you're talking about. I wish I could communicate what I'm talking about. But I don't have a handle on His grace like I need to. And neither do you, or we would be in the same boat you are. You know, I was thinking about what Connie said. When Paul, when Paul did pray for himself, the only time I could remember that he was actually praying, he said, Lord, remove this, this far from me, please. You know what God's answer was? My grace is sufficient for you, dude. And I don't know what exactly that meant to Paul. But that's Paul's problem, not mine. When I go to the Lord, how many of you know His... Do you believe that His grace is sufficient? You may be in the deepest pit in the world, but did you know God's grace is sufficient? That just tells me that there's nothing that He can't take care of because of His grace is so amazing. It's just amazing that He can take care of it. Our problem is, can we understand that He's big enough and able to do this? You know, I don't understand healing. I don't, I don't understand it all. 
I do understand this much. I absolutely believe from my heart that Jesus delivered us 2,000 years ago. I don't, if, if he removed our sin, because the Bible says that he took on himself the sin, everybody say sin, not sins, but just the sin of the world. If he did that, he also took on the death and the disease and all the other trash that's out there, and he bore it on his cross. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities, and with his stripes we are healed. Now he did it all in one thing, it's called the atonement. He did all of it. And my opinion is when he did that, he healed everybody. Unfortunately, what pleases God, it's not unfortunate, but what pleases, faith pleases God. And faith moves God. And you know, I don't understand things that God does. I don't have a clue why He does what He does. He's God. I asked Henry Gruber, why do you think God let it go so long? Before He healed you. And He just looked at me. He don't have no answer for that. I mean, why, are, why is God going to stretch you out within three days of your life and then heal you? Why? Let you go through all that garbage when he knows that your faith is big enough. Or it appears your faith is big enough. I don't understand that. But I'm going to tell you right now, Henry is a different man than he was before he got that disease. And I promise you this much, you try and put a disease back on him and he knows how he got it the first time, he'll get it the second time. You know what I'm talking about. I believe if God removed our sin, he removed our death and our disease. But faith pleases God. And His grace is big enough. By grace are you saved through faith. I'm telling you something. The greater your faith, the greater your grace. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but everything is by grace, through faith. Okay, I haven't said anything I want to say exactly, but I want, you to, I want to ask you one more time now. Do you say you love God? You say that, right? So do I. And that's where I started with this when I told you I don't understand God's grace, but I know His grace is involved in what I'm fixing to tell you. I say I love God, but you know, John said it this way, and I don't want to go this way, but I want to just communicate this as I go. God said this, He said, you know, you say you love God, but you hate your brother. Well, then obviously, He said this, you're a liar. I didn't say John did. Go get the Bible and rip that page out. <laughs> okay? Say, I don't want to hear that. Well, still, did you know that, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to rip every page out of the Bible and say, I don't like that. But does that change the fact that it's still been written? It don't change it. It's been written. And I, I, uh, I, I get a kick out of people. You know, people are so blind. They're so blind. I watch people on TV and I'm going, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You can rip it out all day long. You can burn it and spit on anything you want to, but that does not change the fact that red will always be red. You understand what I'm saying? If you say you love God, you hate your neighbor, you're nothing but a liar. <laughs> That's pretty straight stuff. Let me, let me just... You know, I got, I got a couple hours I'd like to spend on this, but let me just say this. If you say you love, what did God say? He said, I so loved you, or the world, that I did what? I was going to preach this about three weeks ago, but I didn't get around to it. I don't know why. And last week I was going to preach it, but I didn't get around to it. So I preached on the vision that Jeanette had. So today's the day. For God so loved, He gave the best He could find. Now let me just say it this way, and I'm going to quit with this because I got to. It's going to, it's going to get run away here. You say you love God, right? Are we givers? Because God expressed His love. Everybody say He expressed it. He expressed it. How did he express it? Tell me how he expressed it. He expressed it through giving.
the best he could find. See, that convinced me because I need more of a nature change. Are you listening? He gave till it hurt. You know, I was talking with Cassie the other day. I said, Cassie, Cassie's very generous. That's the true truth. Very generous. And it shows because money just pours through her hand. She's just generous. If somebody needs something, she'll just give them money. And she never thinks, she don't even consider it. I said, uh, you know what? We was talking about this, I was telling her, I said, you know, that's probably why you're broke. <laughs> and then I thought about that statement, I thought, but you know what? God gave to her. And I don't know, you know, there's just a line there that you just need to know. What's God bought in? You know what I'm saying? For God so loved the world that He gave. And I got lots of things to say about this because you cannot say you love God and be greedy. Are you hearing me? Let me explain it this way you cannot say you love your family and not take care of them. Is that true or not true? It's absolutely true. Let me say this. You cannot say you love a church and never give to it. Is that true or not true? That's true. That's just, that's just the facts of godly love. You can't say you love God and hate your name because you're a liar. Let me tell you, let me, let me say it this way. Your giving is an expression of your love. Whether it be for God or for humanity. It doesn't matter because they're all one and the same. Because those people are in the image of God. And I asked the Lord the other day, I said, God, you got to help me here. Because when he began to say this in my spirit, I thought, you know what? I am so selfish. Come on, help me here. I, I, I know I'm alone on this. But I'm so selfish and I'm so greedy. Let me ask you a question. If, if we, if the Bible says to love the Lord thy God with all thy what? Heart, mind, soul, or whatever it is. And, the, and, and love your neighbor... As yourself. I'm sorry. I don't do that. <laughs> so you're just too plain. That's just the real truth. We don't do that. If we did that, we'd treat other, each other a whole lot different than we do. You understand what I said? And you might say, well, I know you. You're no different. Thank you. I admit it in front of y'all. I just need a lot of help. But I believe the Lord's trying to change us. How many of you believe the Lord's trying to change us? Yeah, I do. I believe He's trying to change us. I believe He's trying to say, you know what? Get rid of that old, ugly, fleshly man that you are. You know why Kelly and I have issues at times? Because I'm greedy. You know why Kelly and I have issues at times? Because it's all about Larry. Are you in my life? Don't tell me you never lived this. I know you're a liar if you tell me that. Because we all lived it. Whether you're a man or a woman. You know what makes marriage work? Everybody say, giving. That's the truth. You know why marriage works? Because each of you have to give a bit. You know why people who never get married are kind of gnarly? Because they never had to share. They never had to give. They never had to grind on one another. You say, I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear you anymore. I'm going to leave. Well, I'm telling you the truth anyway. It's still the truth. And I, you know what? I'm preaching to me. You just get to listen in. But it's still the truth. I think marriage is good for everybody. Because it teaches you to, everybody say, work together. That's the problem in the church. Well, bless God, I can work with him. I can work with her. I don't even like him. Can you see why Connie did what she did this morning? Maybe it is the Spirit of God talking to us, Connie, huh? 
We can't even give to each other because we don't really love each other. Or we don't really love each other, therefore we're not going to give a drip. Well, I love God well. How have you expressed it? Let me ask you that one more time. And listen, I'm asking me these questions. I am not picking on you because all of you are better than me. But the point I'm trying to make is, listen, how do we express our love? God. I thought about this the other day, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I just thought to myself, you know what? I got off work. I'd worked for Robert for a few hours. There wasn't that much to do. He told me, he said, I want you to do this and that and the other. So I went down there and I did it. And I got through it. It was like... One o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, you can say, well, you made a bad mistake by going to see him. Well, you can say that. But if you were in the hospital, you'd probably want somebody to come say hi to you. So I dropped in on him. It was one o'clock in the afternoon. And he's sitting up in his bed. And I said, dude, what are you doing? He said, I, they're going to kick me out. I said, they're going to kick you out. They're going to send you home. He said, yep. He said, I'm sure glad to see you. And I'm going, well, that's interesting. It's 1 o'clock. I know how hospitals work. He goes, uh, can you take me home? And I said, I'm here, buddy. Whatever you need, I'm here to help you. I'll take you home. That was the same guy I ended up missing him. But nonetheless, he said, uh, it'll probably be 5.30. It's 1 o'clock. I'm going, holy cow, what am I going to do for all this time I have now? Because I'm not going to leave. Are we willing to pour out ourselves for somebody else? Are we willing to do something so simple as just hang out and wait? And I mean, that's no big deal, believe me, it ain't no big deal. But let me, let me just, I got piles of scriptures to give you, but I don't have time today. I got them all written on this hand notes here, just the scripture. How did God express his love? He what? He gave. He so loved, he gave, man. I mean, listen. Everybody say this with me. God loves a cheerful giver. If you have a grudge, just keep it. Because you're not going to impress God anyway. That's why I'm asking the Lord, please change my heart. I don't want to do something because I feel obligated. I want to do it because it's just thrills me. I love you that much. Now, I, now, that's what I'm talking about. If you understand God's grace, we can function on that level. He says the, uh, the Bible says that God is able to make all grace abound toward us or to us that we always I'm say always having all sufficiency may abound unto every good work. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I don't know what verse that was, but it's in there. That God is able to make all grace abound to us, but we always having all sufficiency and all things may abound to every good work. That's the amazing grace I'm talking about. Everybody say, I want grace, God's grace abound to me. Why? So you can hoard it up? No! So you can be full of good works and just go out there and blast the devil and help people right and left. You know, there's so many people out there that can help so many people, but they're greedy. Somebody says, are you talking to yourself? Thank you. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Um, I know there's a fine line in all of this. But Jesus came for the poor. And I see people along the highway, you know, and I think, what am I supposed to do with these people? You ever ask yourself that question? What I do with this guy? He looks like a bum. He smells like a bum. He probably is a bum. But let me tell you this last story, and, and this is the true story, and you've heard this before, but did you know that David Hogan went and brought a king out of the dump? He was a pauper, a dog. He had a family living in cardboard boxes in Mexico in a dump. Filthy, eating anything they could find. God says, Dave Hogan, go to the dump. Why? Don't argue, just go to the dump. Okay. 
I realize Mexico is different than America. Everybody say there are slums. He went to the dump and he found this man. God says, go talk to him. And I've told you the story before, but the man was so beat down, he wouldn't even look at him. He'd stand there because he was, you know, I mean, he's in the dump with his family, with his children and his wife. He wouldn't even hold his head up. Dave says, look at me. And Dave said, finally, I had to go down there and get his chin and make him look at me. He said, look at me. Jesus loves you. I'm a dumb bum. What are you talking about? Isn't God's grace amazing? He is amazing. He said, Jesus loves you. And he finally talked him into the fact that probably God loved him. Got him saved. Let me tell you where that old boy's at today. Can I tell you where he's at? He came from the dump to be in a king. Not literally, but I'm going to tell you what happened. This guy began, he, this guy began to give. And God began to bless. And God gave him visions of being an entrepreneur. Is that what he said? He began to do these things. And he planted these huge orchards. I think they were orange trees or lemon trees. I don't know. And he told Dave two or three different times. Now, you probably heard this story. He said, Dave, I have so many trees. God makes them grow like weeds. He said, I have orange trees and I have lemon trees. And I, I said, I got thousands and thousands of them. He said, I, I got a tithe to the Lord. He said, I want to give you, I don't remember the last time, I think it was like 3,000 trees. The time before that, like 2,000 trees. Dave said, my whole ranch now became a tree farm for orchard, or an orchard farm. And he said, I got, I got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of orange and a lemon. You know, down there, they grow. He said, you know what? Not only did that old boy make a lot of money, but he said, he's blessed us. He said, we're going to sell all that fruit now, too. He said, that's all going to go back into the king. And he said, the guy just keeps prospering. You know why he prospers? Because he cheerfully just pours it out. Give it out. Give it out. Now, there's just a lot to be said here. But uh, I'm going to pick it up next time and talk some more about this. Because I believe this is important for me. For me. All right, stand up. Thank you.